good afternoon friends uh, we are meeting again after a long break uh, i wish you all a very happy new year and hope you had a blast in your diwali uh, before starting my today's session i'll just try to discuss about what we had done in the last session in the last session we had uh, completed support reactions that is what are the different types of beams types of loads and how to calculate the support reactions in today's lecture we are going to cover uh, axial force transverse force shear force bending moment shear force and bending moment diagrams point of contraflexure relationship between shear force and bending moment and then we'll solve one or two numericals based on uh, shear force and bending moment so to start with first of all a very simple question what is a force I know everyone can define a force, but if you want to say about a rigid body and a deformable body. So if I want to define for a rigid body and deformable body, we should know that force is nothing but an external agent which changes or tends to change the state of a body. That means when a rigid body is there, that is it, the body which does not change its shape or size under the application of load, that particular body is called as a rigid body. So in that particular condition, if I want to define a force, it is nothing but an external agent which changes or tends to change the state of a body. That means if the body is at rest condition, it will try to bring the body in motion and if the body is in motion, it will try to bring the body at rest. Uh, for a deformable body, so if I want to define a deformable body, how can I define a deformable body? The word itself suggests that when a body is subjected to a force, then the shape or size of a particular body will change. So that particular body is called as a deformable body. So for a definition of a force for a deformable body is, it will try to change the shape and size of a body. Now in our shear force and bending moment diagrams, we are going to consider a deformable body. So the importance is for an axial force and a transverse force. To start with what is an axial force? The term axial, axial means what? Axis. That means if the load is acting directly on the axis of a beam, the diagram itself shows that the force is acting on the axis, 2 kN force is acting on the axis of the beam, then that particular force is called as an axial force. But there are two types of axial forces, one is a tensile force and second is a compressor force. Now what is a tensile force? So tensile force is nothing but the, if the nature of the body, uh, if the nature of the force is to pull a body that is increase the length of a particular body then that particular type of force is called as a tensile force. So the definition of a tensile force is nothing but if the force is acting directly on the axis and its nature is to increase the length of a body and decrease the diameter of a body then that particular force is nothing but a tensile force. Similarly another axial force is nothing but a compressive force. Compressive forces the nature of the force is to push a body that means when the body is being pushed its dimensions that is the lateral dimensions are increased and the vertical dimensions that are reduced that is the height will be reduced and the diameter will be increased so it will bulge out. So that particular type of a force which is acting directly on the axis which reduces its length but increases its diameter then that is called as a compressive force that we can see it in this particular diagram. Now we come to the now we come to the third point that is or the third type of force that is transverse force. Transverse force is nothing but a force which is acting perpendicular to the axis of the beam. That means the force is acting at an angle of 90 degree. So this force is called as a transverse force and the diagram shows a simply supported beam subjected to a transverse force. Now when this transverse force is acting on the beam, there are different types of forces and moments produced. So that is why we are going to study shear force and bending moment which are produced due to these transverse forces. 
so, I have just uh, compiled all the three types of loadings. First is the compressive loading that we can see it in the diagram that is due to the compressive loading compressive stresses are induced that is internal resistive forces are uh, produced due to tensile loading tensile stresses are produced and due to shear loading we have got a shear stress produced. Now, we start with the shear force and bending moment. So, first of all we have to define what is a shear force and to define a shear force we have got a definition that is it is the algebraic sum of the vertical forces acting to the left or right of a cut section along the span of the beam. Now, two important words are there in this particular definition. First is the algebraic summation, second is the section and third is the L, uh, third is the right or left. So, we first start with the algebraic summation. Algebraic summation means what? We have to consider positive and negative. That means, if the force is acting in the upper direction, we have to consider negative. If the force is acting in the downward direction, we have to consider positive. That sign convention, I am going to discuss it in the latest slide. Second is section. What do you basically mean by the term section? So, in this particular diagram, you can see that it is a simply supported beam and it has got at support a hinge support, at support B it is a roller support and at C, D and E we have got three forces. So, now if I want to define a section, the section is those points at which the forces are acting. So, what are those points? A will be a support reaction, C is a force of 5 kilo Newton, D is a force of 10 kilo Newton and it is a force of again uh, at E 8 kilo Newton force and B a support reaction. So, we have got 5 sections that is A, C, D, E and B. So, at all these sections we have to calculate the value of shear force. Okay. So, first was algebraic summation that is plus and minus depending upon the forces in the upward or downward direction. Second is section and the third important term is either to right or to the left of the section. That means, when I am calculating a shear force, I have to consider only one side of the section. That is, I have to consider all the right side or all the left side, but I cannot take both. Right? That is, from one side we start with right, from another side we start with left. If I have started with right, then I have to go always for the right section. That is only for our convenience, we are trying to go for that. Okay? So, uh, shear force is the algebraic sum of the vertical forces acting to the left or to the right of a cut section along the span of the beam. Now, to explain this particular shear force, I have taken a very simple example of a simply supported beam subjected to point loads. Point loads we had studied in the last uh, session that is the forces which are acting in a point that is concentrated at a one particular point then that particular type of load is called as a point load or a concentrated load. So, over here we have got 5, 10 and 8 kilo Newtons as a concentrated load. Now, we are required to find out the support reaction. So, to find out the support reaction, now everybody is clear how to find out the support reaction. We have to apply our conditions of equilibrium, sigma h is equal to 0, sigma v is equal to 0 and sigma moment is equal to 0. So, we are finding out the support reactions. At support A, we are getting 8.2 kilo Newtons and at point B, we are getting 14.8 kilo Newton support reaction. Right. After calculating this support reaction, we are considering a section x x at a distance of 6 meters from the left hand support. So, in the next slide, we are showing that we are taking a section that is red line x x at a distance of 6 meters from support A. Now, if I want to calculate so, imagine the beam is cut into 2 pieces at a section x x and is separated as shown in the figure. So, you can see over here two parts of section x x one on right side one on left side. Right? Now, we will calculate the forces or we will calculate the force on the right side as well as on the left side of the section. So, taking left hand portion we can see on the left hand portion how many forces are there 8.2 kilo Newton in the upper direction that is the transverse force. So, in the upper direction we take it as positive 
and 5 kilo Newton in the downward direction we take it as negative. So, on the left portion we have got plus 8.2 minus 5 that is plus 3.2 kilo Newton in the upward direction. Similarly, if I want to calculate the uh, algebraic sum of force on the right side. So, what we can get? Uh, it will be 14.8 in the upward direction. So, positive then uh, 8 in the downward direction negative and 10 in the downward direction negative. So, total we have got 3.2 kilo Newton in the downward direction. So, you can see in the figure at the top figure 3.2 that is left portion 3.2 upward and in the bottom figure 3.2 in the downward right. So, now at a section x x I can say that we have got a 3.2 kilo Newton in the upward and 3.2 in the downwards. So, net force is equal to what 0. But suppose if we do not get an correct uh, or equal amount then what will happen? The force will try to shear off or tear off the beam from section x x right. Thus the section x x is considered is subjected to forces 3 point kilo Newton and moment I am going to talk later. This force will try to shear off the beam and that is why it is called as a shear force. So, now if I want to define a shear force, so shear force at a section is the algebraic sum of the vertical forces acting on the beam either the word important is either to the right or to the left of the section. So, this diagram shows 3.2 kilo Newton is the shear force. Now, we come to the next term that is bending moment right. So, bending moment is again uh, nothing but a moment, but there is a very huge difference between a moment and a bending moment right. So, first of all we will talk about bending moment it is nothing but the algebraic sum of the moment of the forces to the left or to the right of the section. So, in the our same diagram we are calculating the values of uh, bending moment. So, if I want to calculate the bending moment at the left section what will be the bending moment or the moment. So, moment is nothing but force into perpendicular distance. So, if I want to take the moment at section x x for the left portion it will be 8.2 into 6 and it will try to move in a clockwise direction. So, positive and second is 5 into 2 and it is rotating in the anti clockwise direction. So, the algebraic sum will be 39.2 kilo Newton meters and as it is positive. So, it will be clockwise. Similarly, if I consider the right side for the right side if I want to calculate the moment uh, at section x x what it will be 14.8 into 9 and it is in the anti clockwise direction. So, it will be minus then 8 kilo Newton into 5 it is in the clockwise direction positive and 10 into 3 again it is in the clockwise direction rotation. So, it will be positive. So, net will be minus 39.2 kilo Newton meters. So, we can say or we can show it in our diagram that on the left side it is 39.2 clockwise and in the right it is 39.2 in the anti clockwise. Thus, the algebraic sum of the moments is nothing but 39.2 kilo Newton per uh, kilo Newton meters. This is shown in the diagram. Okay. So, at section x x on left side it is clockwise 39.2 kilo Newton meters and on anti clockwise it is 39.2 kilo Newton meters. So, bending moment is nothing but the algebraic sum of the moment of all the forces acting on the beam either to right or to the left of the section. Now, I had uh, talked that there is some difference between a moment and a bending moment right. If uh, we talk about a moment what is moment? It is nothing but a product of force and a perpendicular distance and the tendency of this moment is to rotate a body right is to rotate a body either in clockwise direction or in the anti clockwise direction. But if I talk about a bending moment for the bending moment the tendency of the moment is to bend a body that is 
it tries to push the body in the vertical downward direction or in the vertical upward direction or in other, other words we can say it is trying to produce deflection. So, what is the difference between a moment and a bending moment? Moment tries to rotate and bending moment tries to deflect the body this is one. Second is moment is we take the moment of all the forces about a particular point. We take the moment of all the forces on the section right. So, uh, sign conventions for the shear force we can see that in the sign convention we have taken one section and uh, the section is dividing the beam into two parts that is left side and right side. So, if the right portion shear force that is yellow uh, yellow uh, color shows that the right portion is pushed in the downward direction then shear force is taken as positive and if the right portion that is yellow f shows the shear force in the pushing the body or the right portion of the beam in the upward direction then shear force is taken as negative. Similarly, for bending moment as I told you bending moment tries to deflect a body See over here that the beam has deflected in the form of a shape that is convexity is produced is nothing but a sagging bending moment. So, if I want to define a bending moment a sagging bending moment we can say that the bending moment is considered as sagging if it tends to bend the beam to a curvature having convex and that sagging bending moment is taken as positive. Similarly, if the convexity is produced or it tends to bend the beam to a curvature having convexity at the top then it is called as a negative bending moment or it is called as a hogging bending moment ok. Uh, now, uh, the important part what is the importance of finding out this shear force and bending moment? Why we are calculating this shear force and bending moment? The importance is that if we have got different different sections then we can easily see from the diagram what are the variations of shear force and bending moment at different different points right. That is why we are show uh, we are drawing a shear force and bending moment.